amazing guitarist and singer who plays with the Neil Morse Band. He has his own brand new album out called The Great Unknown. It's available now. I'd like to welcome Eric Gillette. Hey, how you doing? Sorry, I missed your call. No, that's okay. Did we get the time right? Are we good? Oh, yeah, we're good. I was just trying. I'm actually tracking vocals. Uh, I just need to take a break anyways. But <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, I was actually belting out and I couldn't hear in the studio here. What are you working on? The new, uh, new, uh, Morse, new, the Morse, new Morse, Morse Band? Yeah, pretty big monster of uh, everything. I mean, I just finished all my guitars uh, about a week ago or so. And I just finished all my lead vocals yesterday, and now I'm working on all the backgrounds. So quite a task especially you know it's, it's hard enough to do one album now it's a double disc so it's like <laughs> double the work but it's it's gonna be awesome everybody in the prog world is really looking forward to that album i mean the hype is pretty out of control well we're excited about it and we don't we know mike is he's been <laughs> blasting it all over but you know and it's it's weird coming you know from us because you know we're obviously biased because we wrote it and but i mean it's really something it's going to be amazing. I, I feel like it's going to be pretty big, and um, it's just, I mean, it's different. I feel like this, this go-around we have, I mean, we know more about, you know, the first time was, you know, it was an experiment because we had never written together or, you know, um, right. anything like that. So I know for me, I feel like I kind of settled into where my spot is, you know, I having done a record and toured it and played with these guys, you know, for a, a good while now, it's I feel like we all know where our spots are, our strengths and where, where each other's strengths are. And we're, we're really, you know, playing into that a lot. So we're really excited about it. That's great, man. Of course you have the new album out, your solo album, the great unknown, which I guess now is officially out and in, in people's hands. Um, yes. Just talk me through, deciding to write that you know coming off the grand experiment did you feel like okay now people maybe have a better idea of who i am let me let me get something out there and how long did the whole thing take yeah maybe it was a little bit of that um really i just felt like i wanted to do another solo album and i i wanted it to be more um i knew i wanted it to have i knew i, knew I wanted every song to have lyrics and singing and um a little more song structure not as instrumental as i mean there is a lot of instrumental breaks and stuff but um so yeah i had that kind of idea for a while and then i think it was about a year ago more than a year ago now in may i sat down and just started trying to write and got really inspired and i actually wrote escape the the epic first and at, at first i wasn't sure if it was going to be if I was just going to try to keep that song going and maybe it would be a, some sort of concept, but I, you know, I got to about the 18 minute mark and felt it kind of wrapped up. And so that kind of made the decision for me. So it became more of a song based album aside from the Epic, but yeah. So I spent, you know, it took a good while after that because, you know, we, we did a summer tour, I think it was June or July after that. And, coming home and recouping and then trying to get back into it. And, and, you know, writing's tough because sometimes you have, well, it's hard, number one, because you have to have time. And when you do have time, sometimes you're not, you know, inspiration maybe isn't flowing like it should or you think it should. And then there's days where, I mean, I, I had days where it, nothing really came of writing. And then I had days where I just like, it just piled out, you know, a couple songs at a time. So it was really interesting. Um, and I've had a lot of people ask me about how I write and, you know, I've learned a lot from just being around Neil and the, you know, and those guys and, um, their process and whether it be lyrically or, um, you know, quarterly or if that's even a word, but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I actually wrote, I would say probably 80% of it sitting at the keyboard because that's really my first instrument. And that's where I feel at home as far as I can see and visualize things better or, you know, if I'm, if I need to get to a different key, I, I usually can just go to a keyboard and figure it out faster than huh. a guitar, which usually throws some people off guard. But, you know, I started that when I was four years old and I didn't start guitar till 12. So it really is kind of home base as far as an instrument goes. But yeah, so it was, it was a long process and 
um, I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. And the first album I did, another reason I wanted to do an album is I wanted one that represented me. Not that the first one doesn't, but I feel like I've grown a lot and come a long way since yeah. uh, Afterthought came out. And really, Afterthought was... I needed something and I wanted something to have a product when I went and did um, the momentum tour with Neil um, when I first got, you know, before we became New More Span when I was just a hired gun in his band. Um, so I wanted to have a product and I had a bunch of songs I'd kind of written, you know, some of them dating back to like 2008 or nine and they were just kind of demoed and laying around. And then a lot of the other ones um, like lost and, a couple of the other ones afterthought and all that I kind of came up with. So that's, you know, why some of them are more instrumental because I had already written them as instrumentals. But with this record, I really wanted to, you know, I wanted to have something to hand somebody and be like, this is what represents me as a, as an artist. And this is what, you know, this is what I like and this is what I do. And, you know, I feel like it represents me um, pretty well. So, yeah, I think so. I mean, you can hear the growth between the two records, and you can hear it more, I guess, full, maybe. Um, might be the word I'm looking for. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, yeah. I think my, most people might be surprised when they first put it on, coming from your background and what they know of you. And that first song is, you know, pretty heavy yeah. <laughs> and really guitar-driven. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even, I'm not sure there's keyboards in the first track, um, but... Uh, you know, that that was a bold move to sort of make that like, okay, no, take this instead of releasing, you know, maybe Runaway, which right. might be what people might expect more from you, I think. Yeah, and and that's part of it too. I mean, that was pretty intentional um, for a couple reasons because it's the title track, you know, I kind of wanted it to be first um, since that's what I ended up naming the album. And then also, uh, like you said, I mean, it, it catches you off guard and whether you like it or not, I mean, it's, it's there and it's, it's in your face. And, but I also wanted to, you know, maybe appeal to a, a different crowd of maybe the, the people who like the heavier stuff right. and kind of maybe lure those people in and, you know, and then have them see what the other stuff is about. Because I know for me, I mean, that, ha that has a lot of progressive elements, mainly in the middle section, but it's pretty straight ahead. It's pretty riffy, but it's, you know, pretty straight ahead rock to some extent. Um, but I remember like when I first heard, you know, progressive music, when I, when I first heard, uh, John Petrucci or, or Mike Portnoy, or, you know, when I first heard that it was like these doors opening to a, a different realm. And I kind of want to, I thought it would be cool. You know, I don't know if it's happening or not going to happen, but if, you know, someone who just is into heavy rock music, hears it, and maybe they're into the first couple songs and it's slowly getting a little more progressive and out there. And maybe that's, maybe that's their window to opening, uh, sure. you know, to, to discovering progressive music. So that was the thought. What about, uh, you know, hooking up with Thomas Lang and, and Diego and, and Connor from Haken, how did those get together and what was working with those guys like? Oh, it was amazing. Um, well, I'd been a fan of Thomas for, you know, a good while. I, I've been just, you know, I, I peruse YouTube and watch, I'm a big drum drummer fan and I like to play drums. So I'm always watching drum videos and he's always been one out there. That's just one of those ones. That's just like untouchable as far as technique and style. I mean, he's, he's incredible. And yeah, I mean, it was as simple as having a, a mutual connection and some emails starting a dialogue and, he was into it. I sent him the demos and he thought it was really cool. And, uh, I thought it was going to be cool because I know he's done some progressive stuff and, um, but I thought it, you know, I don't know of a ton of progressive stuff he's done and I thought it would be really cool to have him on it. And, uh, he just killed it. I mean, and I'm not one to, you know, he tracked it in his studio in LA and I'm not one to try and tell <laughs> Thomas Lang or any other, amazing drummer how to play drums so it, it was basically we, we maybe talked about a couple small things but it was like i just said do your thing and i trust you you're you're phenomenal so <laughs> just do your thing and he sent the tracks back and i remember the day i got them i was just grinning ear to ear while i listened to all of them because <laughs> it's just incredible 
And that's another thing about, you know, I mixed the record and as I said, I'm a giant drum fan in general. So, I mean, it's, it's a drum heavy mix. It's a drum heavy album, but what I really love that he brought is <clears throat> there's, there's drummers and then there's drummers who like create, um, signature parts, if that makes any sense. Sure. Um, yeah. and so there's things he did that I wouldn't have even thought of number one and number two, they just kind of became like a signature thing. Like I know when I listen to music in the past, like, air drumming these certain parts that are just like the signature part. And if you go see him live, you expect to kind of hear something close to that. And he definitely brought that. And I think that's really incredible. But, um, as far as the Haken guys, I had been a fan of them as well, because I remember we were, I think, I don't know where we were. We were on tour with the new Morse band and we were in, uh, one of the vans or shuttles getting to and from a gig or an airport. And I remember Mike put on, cockroach king it was like you got to hear this mm -hmm. middle section of and that's the first i had heard of him and i was just like whoa so i went and got the mountain and ever since then i've been a giant fan of theirs and so on our last summer tour we did last year um they opened like four or five shows maybe with us and we just kind of you know got to hit it off with them and chat a bit and when I got back, I the first thing I thought of, I was trying to figure out who could play bass and some keys on it, and those, I mean, instantly came to mind. They, I mean, they're phenomenal and can play anything, and they're, they're younger, and they, I don't know, they're just, I think, the new wave of uh, incredible prog musicians or even metal at that. So, yeah, they, they all killed it, and I couldn't be any happier with um, their contributions. Yeah, that's a hell of a group together. I mean, you couldn't have picked a better oh, core yeah. to play to play with or do this kind of music for sure. That was my thought. <laughs> the last tour, when people have seen you live and I could see you guys a couple of times, you do that thing where you rotate instruments, and everybody's yeah. so exceptional at every instrument. Uh, <laughs> you know, what is that like with the dynamic of the band? Could you probably see your, yourselves ever doing like a song? on an album where each person just plays an instrument that's not theirs for the entire song. I imagine you could probably do a whole album like that and it would sound amazing. <laughs> well, I think, um, ironically enough, I think, I think we had that conversation when we were writing this new record. I, I don't remember if it was Bill or Randy or somebody mentioned that it would be cool if we did it, you know, and recorded it that way. And then, you know, and then did it live that way as well. But, um, uh, yeah, that didn't happen on this go around. But yeah, I mean everyone's so good and like, I mean everyone's pretty much a multi instrumentalist and singer, and it's it's really awesome to have, um, you know that diversity in the group because I think it makes a difference in in musicianship as well. I mean having at least a knowledge of another instrument makes a big difference in my opinion. Let alone if you can play it play a different instrument amazingly so yeah it's it's really awesome and pretty unique to have a whole band like that i think but yeah i think i think uh the fans really like that when we do that we call it the switcheroo but I, I think everyone like that i know i like it i like the little break and go bash on the drums for a little bit well it's it's not because you guys do it at a at a really exceptional level it's not you know you've seen that before with some bands where they go and a guy bangs on some cymbals in the back you know to, to have the drummer <laughs> yeah that kind of gimmicky stuff but you guys legitimately shred on every instrument and it's it's really <laughs> it's really impressive to watch um well thanks talk about what you do were doing before the momentum tour because that's when i became aware of you i saw you on that tour and then <clears> after that you know of course the the grand experiment album what was eric gillette musically before that and what were your plans what were your plans to hey I, i'd love to record prog and work with portnoy or what was what was in your head and how'd you get started in all this well, I mean, first off, I mean, who wouldn't want to work with Mike Portnoy? But I didn't even see that as a feasible thing. You know, it was right. an untouchable, like, in what universe would I ever get to play in a band with, you know, Mike and Neil or these guys? It's So, no, that that never really crossed my mind. Not because I'm not a negative person. I just didn't really grasp that as being a possibility. But um, yeah, before that, I was... I mean, I was gigging around playing a lot of actually country music, uh, maybe country rock or whatever you want to call it, mainly because that's um, 
the only sort of gigs that, that were available and paying at the time and I was playing music and I was happy to be doing that and I always liked to write and you know record I hadn't released anything progressive or anything like that yet but it was always a passion of mine but once again I didn't see how that would be um, a possibility to do that as a career um, until the day I saw Neil I think it was his on his Twitter page had posted about you know the open auditions he was going to have you know you got to submit I think it was three videos and a couple of them were pretty lengthy and pretty difficult and but I knew immediately I was like okay I'm going to do that <laughs> and uh so I just buckled down and did it and I thought I thought I would do one on keyboard and one on guitar to kind of maybe give me a slight edge or something um I didn't know if he was looking for you know more than one keyboard player or a utility person or what but I think it ended up working in my favor and um yeah it's pretty amazing to go from where I was to you know to playing with these guys in a group I still pinch myself a lot and I mean it's it's incredible I you know I just get to look back and see okay I've recorded and played with you know pretty much my two favorite drummers you know Mike Portnoy and Thomas Lang it's pretty incredible so i uh very blessed and i don't take it for granted at all <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic that's awesome i think that's something that all of us growing up listening to dream theater and spock's beard and, and whatever would have been like yeah that's it that's the playing with those guys that'd be it that's that would be good enough right yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> when you're not recording and and playing this kind of music what are you listening to is it are you still listening to like the Haken and stuff when you have downtime or do yeah. you to do something else? Yeah. I, I just got affinity and I mean, it's been a couple of weeks, but yeah, it's incredible. I, those guys are insane and, uh, production's awesome. Um, I've been listening to, to Haken. Um, who else recently? Really, to be honest with you in the past month or two, it's been so crazy between the way, like, finishing my record and recording the new Morse band record. And, um, I also do session work for my studio here and I got quite a bit of that going on right now. So it's a lot of juggling and a lot of pretty much music all day long, which is, there's no complaints here, but, uh, I say that to say that sometimes at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a little wiped and my ears are a little burnt and, you right. know, yeah. Sometimes I just drive around in silence just for a little break, but it's not very often I do that. But yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm always out there looking for. I'm open to uh, anything new. Maybe I hadn't heard of yet, but as of now, I guess the main thing I've been listening to has been the new Haken album. Yeah, that that album's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Just real quick. Uh, so, are you? Uh, I guess you got all the Neil Moore stuff coming up. There's the Morse Fest weekend and that new album right. and whatever that tour is going to be. Are you going to be able to tour for your album and put a band together and take that on the road at all? Um, I really would like to. It's it's mainly a matter of, um, I mean, if there's if there's anyone out there listening that's a, <laughs> uh, wants to put a tour together, that's that'd be phenomenal. I mean, the the, the cool thing is is that everyone who played on the record is. You know, we've communicated about it, and it as long as, um, basically, as long as schedules would line up, everyone's on board to to play live shows and maybe do a tour or something. So, um, it's just a matter of getting a piece together. And I've I've been so busy right now with everything else; it was kind of not on my radar right this second. Yeah. But um, I definitely think it would be pretty awesome to be able to do that, and I th I think it probably hopefully be uh, well received and uh, something a little different, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically just the logistics of getting it all together is that's the big, the, the big right. task, but, but yeah, everyone's on board. Challenge. So yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I hope that happens and congrats on the album. It's fantastic. I think everybody that yeah. likes Neil and knows you and, and that kind of music is going to dig it. I don't see why they wouldn't. It's pretty great. So Thanks, man. I appreciate that. And uh, I'll, I will see you in a couple of weeks at Morse Fest. So hopefully we can chat. All right, and man. Say hi, man. Sounds good. Okay. Take it easy, man. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.
Thanks to Eric for the interview. We're going to close with the title track off his album. This is The Great Unknown. For more information and upcoming interviews, please check theprogreport.com, follow us on Facebook, at The Prog Report on Twitter, or download the podcast on iTunes. Thanks. <laughs>